And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Santoshi Russo.
Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for Mark Santoshi Russo. We'd like to invite at this time Andrew Stephen K. Hayes, if you could come to the stage. I know there's uh, some special things that are going to happen here right now, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, how about that documentary, huh? Gee. I think that uh, it really is a uh, humbling thing, a humbling thing to watch something like that. You know, we could all do that. We could all go back at all our pictures, you know, put that together. Humbling and uh, in the sense that uh, how quickly time goes by or seems to go by, but actually it doesn't go by quickly. So many experiences, you know, that we've, we've shared. And in my path of walking with uh, Mark Russo, you know, coming up on three decades, not including all that he went through in order to be ready for that moment when we met so that he would be favorably inclined to join his path with mine. You know, those old pictures of a, of a teenager. I remember it brought to mind a, a moment in my own life when I was a green belt in karate and uh, I had my suit on and you know one of those kind of teenager pictures like that and I was very proud of it you know and I got my dad to take my pictures and my father said to me at that time he said uh, you know someday this picture is going to be really funny you know, you're just going to laugh when you see it I didn't like that because I was real proud of that thing you know and I said well why he said well one of two things are going to happen you're either going to get burned out on this martial arts stuff and quit and when you look at that you're going to be embarrassed at how important it was in your life at that time or you may just become a legendary world master and when you see yourself in that green belt you'll kind of chuckle either way it'll be funny <laughs> oh very humbling very humbling you know so now we look at teenage pictures of mark russo and the earnestness did you see that the earnestness in his face and his look and all the places he searched for those kind of answers for a very, very sincere life question on a life quest. And then we met and I was not a particularly encouraging person, I don't believe, in the very beginning of our relationship. Oh no, this guy, he's already too good. You know, he's good, he knows what he... You don't want to change over to ours. Everything about our martial art is different than the conventional, and uh, it'll, it'll be hard. And then, that's just the physical part. Then you have to understand all this stuff. Oh, man, and so many martial arts are so simple and easy and encouraging to understand. You just train hard and do what the teacher says, and you get there. Oh, man, there's a the whole mental aspect. So, there's more. There's a whole spiritual aspect. To grow spiritually is, is like the way a snake would grow. You're gonna have to let go of a lot of skins in order to get to your full potential that way. And it's very painful. I don't know, are you are you're ready for that? Are you ready for that? And the days became months, became years and decades. And I remember so many times being different places. I'd be out in the mountains of California, and this Florida guy's here again, you know, and uh, man, he still hadn't gotten the picture, you know, uh, this is going to be too difficult. And I'd be in England, and he'd already set it up that he could be over in England when I'm teaching, and uh, hey, this guy really wants to be a part of this path. So there are times when we are the teacher, but so many of you are teachers, you teach, and there, there's the opening part of being a teacher where you're the answer person. Or say, hey, what about this? What if they get you in a choke here? Or do they come around here with a wheel kick over here and uh, collapse your cheek in and you show them just the right thing and then you let them practice. So there's the time for being the answer person. And I remember there was that time in our life. Now it was tough with Mark Russo because you saw he's a very, very accomplished martial artist. So the kind of questions and challenges that I had, I, don't know, I had to be pretty good in order to pull that off. And then there's another phase of us being a teacher. This is where you're kind of like the magician because if we're not careful, the student can start to rely on us. They start to rely on us. And if we're a corrupt individual, we can encourage that. Yeah, keep coming back for more. But 
there's that magical time where the questions are answered with questions. Hey, well, what if a guy does this and gets you down here? And I say, well, you know, and then I answer the question with another question. <laughs> And that's frustrating for a lot of people, very frustrating for a lot of people. And some of you know, you know, over the years, there have been a lot of people, a lot of people who come into my life who, who even swore, man, you'll never get rid of me, I'm here for life, and a lot of them left. It's a very difficult, very trying time in that, that magical period there. They got frustrated. I wasn't spoon-feeding them enough, or uh, the answers that uh, I had, uh, they didn't believe in themselves enough. There are all these reasons, okay? Or maybe they develop different approaches or different ideas of what success was looking like and I couldn't provide that. A lot of people came into my life and I look around and, oh, here's Mark, Santoshi Russo, still walking the path with me. So there's a third phase, there's a third phase in a teacher's life uh, and that's called where you become, with your student, a boo you. Boo you. Now this is used a lot. My teacher taught me the word. It's misused. It's grossly misused on the internet now. People think it means martial friend. Because if you write boo, it doesn't mean martial. And you, it doesn't mean friend. But boo you doesn't mean your buddy in the martial arts. Uh, a very clever teacher that I studied with. Let people believe that. Because he's a ninja. The truth is very, very few master, world master teachers are ever going to have a boo you. What it means is that there's a certain point at which you just say, hey, look, I'm just some dude trying to figure this stuff all out, too. You know, I've just been doing it for more years. We're walking a path together, and we become very vulnerable. We say, well, what are the last problems? What are the last challenges? What are the last questions? And the teacher takes away all the magic. The teacher takes away all the mystery. The teacher takes away all the easy, quick answers and just said, we're people walking the path. People walking the path. And this is maybe one of the scariest moments in a martial artist's life. I remember my teacher telling me that moment when his teacher told him, hey, I don't have anything really more to teach you. Oh, he said it was the loneliest, scariest moment in his life. Now, sure, his teacher had more things he could help him discover and manifest, but they were boo you. Very few people have reached that level where they really don't need me anymore. And I mean that in a great way, that Mark Russo doesn't need me in his life. He's got a beautiful dojo full of wonderful, enthusiastic, very capable people. Gee, you saw the demos today. You know, he's married to a wonderful woman who supports him and is a part of his his work and his whole life there. You saw her demonstration today. and You've seen the way they work. He doesn't really need me. Some martial arts, you need to stay involved. If we were judo, if we were kendo, you need to stay involved because there are competitions. And because there are competitions, there need to be groups and organizations that uh, promote that so that you can continue to progress in the competition. But our martial art, you really don't need that. I think years ago, Mark Russo could have easily said, hey, thank you so much, enjoyed it, I'm on my own, and he would have had every right to do so, but he didn't. He stayed on the path next to me, walking the steps, and so I'm honored at this point to salute one of my oldest continuous Boo Yu martial students with one of the highest awards that can be given in the martial arts. In Japan, the uh, highest level is called a meiji. A meiji. Me uh, is literally means a name, and a jin is a person. A person who's made a name for himself. And the way I look at it, for someone to get this high a degree, I expect them to have had an effect not only on their own students, but everybody's student. And everybody in our martial lineage knows Mark Russo. But more so than that, uh, this higher degree, we expect a person to have affected the martial arts of the world. And so the way I put it is, I, I, I look at people who are influenced and affected without even being a student of Mark Russo. He's had that kind of an effect on the world. He's an idealist. And as you saw in there, he's lived that ideal and the ideal hasn't always played out for him and he kept going. What a lesson for all of us in there. The martial arts in the world are different today because of the influence of my friend, martial friend, warrior friend, Mark Russo. 
He has some new challenges ahead of him. I'm going to give him as his martial friend. But for now, please join me in saluting the Meiji Hachidan 8th degree black belt, Mark Santoshi Russo.